In this lecture, we will learn about Mohr's circle, and its application on determining the principal stresses, principal planes, and, maximum shear stress. At the end of this lecture, we will solve three numerical problems, based on Mohr's circle from the previous year gate question papers. Mohr's circle, invented by Christian Otto Mohr, is a two-dimensional graphical representation of any stress tensor. Mohr's circle is often used to determine the material's strength, soil strength, and the strength of build structures. It is also used for calculating stresses in any plane by reducing them to vertical and horizontal components. The vertical components are normal to the plane and the horizontal components are tangential to the plane. The planes on which the shear stress or tangential stress induced is zero are called as principal planes. The normal stress acting on a principal plane is called as principal stress. We have two principal planes, one is major principal plane, and the other one is minor principal plane. Therefore, the normal stress acting on the major principal plane is called as major or maximum principal stress. And the normal stress acting on the minor principal plane is called as minor or minimum principal stress. Let's consider an example to understand the principal planes and principal stresses. Here, we have a two-dimensional stress tensor, corresponding to the state of plane stress. The normal stress is sigma x in the x-axis, and sigma y in the y-axis, are in tensile nature. Tau xy, is the shearing stress, which always comes with a complementary stress. Suppose, if we need to determine the normal and tangential stress, at any plane in the stress tensor. We can find them using stress transformation equations. But, our objective is to find the principal planes, and principal stresses. As said earlier, the principal planes are the planes where the shear stress or tangential stress is zero. Therefore, to locate the principal plane, we can substitute zero to shear stress, that is tau theta, in the transformation equation. On simplifying the equation, we will get, 2 theta is equal to, tan inverse of, tau xy by sigma x minus sigma y. Here theta is the location of the principal plane. Now, the normal stress or the direct stress corresponding to this theta is the principal stress. Let's now learn how to plot the Mohr circle, and, how to find the principal stresses, and maximum shear stress, using Mohr circle. Before starting with the Mohr circle, let's recap about the principal stresses, and see what is maximum shear stress as they are very important. Principal stresses, are the normal or direct stresses, that occur on the major principal plane and the minor principal plane. Principal stresses occur at the plane where shear stresses are zero. They are very important in predicting the failure of the structure as it is the maximum stress at the critical plane. Next we will see maximum shear stress. Maximum shear stress is the maximum concentrated shear force in a small area. Like the normal stresses, the shear stress will also have a maximum value at the given angle, theta tau max. Maximum shear stress occurs at the plane, which is 45 degrees from the principal plane. Getting back to more circle. It is a graphical method to determine the normal and shear stresses for any plane on a stress tensor, easily without choosing stress transformation equation. Let's learn to construct the Mohr circle. To begin with, we know that there should be a vertical and a horizontal axis for every graphical method. Since Mohr's circle is one of them, we will first draw the horizontal and the vertical axis. The horizontal axis represents the normal or direct stresses, and the vertical axis represents the shear stresses. Considering the same stress tensor, let us first mark sigma x and sigma y on the horizontal axis. Usually, stresses in the x-axis are larger, compared to the stresses in the y-axis. And, note that sigma x and sigma y are marked on the positive side of the graph, since the tensile stresses are assumed to be positive. Then, the shear stress tau xy acting on the x-plane, 
which is likely to create a counterclockwise rotation, so mark it on the positive phase of the vertical axis. Similarly, tau xy acting on the y plane, which is creating clockwise rotation, can be marked on the negative phase of the vertical plane. Now, join these two points, which defines the diameter of the Mohr circle. We can now draw the Mohr circle, with the obtained diameter. It is interesting to know that, each point on the Mohr circle represents the normal and shear stress for a particular plane on the stress tensor. We can also determine the principal stresses from the Mohr circle. Since we already know that the shear stresses are zero at the x-axis, the points meeting the Mohr circle on the x-axis defines the principal stresses for our stress tensor. Point A is the maximum principal stress and point B is the minimum principal stress from the origin. Principal stresses can be calculated by taking the x-coordinate of the center of the circle and adding the radius of the circle to find the maximum principal stress and subtracting the radius of the circle to find the minimum principal stress. We can also calculate the maximum shearing stress tau max with the help of the Mohr circle. It is evident that the maximum shear occurs at the radius of the Mohr circle, which we can easily determine by using the equation for the radius of a circle. Now you may remember that the maximum shear stress occurs at the plane 45 degree from the major principal plane. But, here, the major principal plane, that is x-axis is 90 degree from the plane where the maximum shear stress occurs. It is an important thing to know is that the angles in the Mohr circle are double compared to the angle of the plane in our stress tensor. This is because while plotting the normal stresses on the Mohr circle, there is 180 degrees between sigma x and sigma y, whereas on our stress tensor, the angle between sigma x and sigma y is 90 degrees. This is why we use 2 times the theta notation on the Mohr circle. Theta is the angle of the plane on our stress tensor, and 2 theta is the angle of the same plane on the Mohr circle. Let's see some example numericals from previous year gate question papers. First question is from the gate 2012 paper. The question was, the state of stress at a point under plane stress condition is sigma xx is 40 megapascal, sigma yy is 100 megapascal, and tau xy is 40 megapascal. So, the stresses on a point or a stress tensor were given in the question and asked to find the radius of the Mohr circle for that particular state of stress. Let's first draw our stress tensor. The stress tensor for the given stress would look like this. We know the formula for radius of the Mohr circle when sigma xx is more than sigma yy, but in this case, sigma yy is more than sigma xx, therefore, the formula can be changed like this for finding radius of Mohr circle for the given state of stress. Now, substitute the values for the known parameters in the equation and get the answer for the radius of the Mohr circle, which on simplifying, we will get 50 MPa. Let's see the next example problem. This question is from the GATE 2018 paper. The question was, the state of stress is at a point, for a body in a plane stress, is shown. If the minimum principal stress is 10 kPa, then what is the normal stress sigma y in kPa? So, the normal stress on the x-plane and tau xy on a point were given in the question, and asked to find the normal stress on y-plane, if the minimum principal stress is 10 kPa. Let's first write down the minimum principal stress formula, in which all the required parameters are given except sigma y, so substitute the known values and solve for the unknown value, that is sigma y, then we will get the answer, sigma y is equal to 37.78 kPa. And, the last example problem is from the GATE 2009 question paper. Here, the question was, if the principal stresses in a plain stress problem are sigma 1 is equal to 100 MPa, and sigma 2 is equal to 40 MPa, then what will be the maximum shear stress in megapascal? So, we already know that the maximum shear stress that is tau max is nothing but the radius of the Mohr circle. To use this formula, we should have sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. But, 
Here in this question the parameters given are the principal stresses 1 and 2, that is major and minor principal stresses. Let us draw the Mohr circle for the given principal stresses. Our Mohr circle will look like this. We know that tau is maximum at the radius of the Mohr circle. We currently have sigma 1 and sigma 2 coordinates of the Mohr circle. Since, the radius of the Mohr circle is also, sigma 1 minus sigma 2, by 2. We can solve for our radius of the Mohr circle eventually the tau max. Note that, when sigma 1 and sigma 2 that is major and minor principal stresses are given to find the maximum shear stress, then we have an option to use, major principal stress minus minor principal stress, divided by 2, formula. So, on substituting the values, we will get, tau max is equal to 30 megapascal. That's the end of this lecture. If you find it valuable, then do like, comment and share the video to your friends. And, subscribe to my channel for more civil engineering lecture videos. Press the bell icon for the instant notification, whenever I upload a new video in this channel.